Today on No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer. And it's often said this way, as it, as it pertains to us walking out our faith on a daily basis. It is a lot easier for God to steer a moving car than a parked car. And when I, when, when I get to the place and I, you know, whether you park straight in a slot or you're downtown and you do a little parallel parking there next to a meter or whatever, you know, once you're there, you turn the car off, your power steering is dead. It's like, click up, it won't turn anymore, right? Put your brake on and all that stuff. It's hot because the air conditioner's not on and all that. You know, we, we, we can't muscle our cars around. And, and so too, when it, when it comes to walking with, with the Lord, we must understand that there, are, there is preparation, that there is prayer, there are steps of faith that we actively take in all of, these, all of these little things. We see the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Uh, it, it, you know, we're working in partnership with God, if that's the right way to, to phrase that. If you're in a simple, he showed me. Taking the cross for us, no greater love than innocent blood. Welcome to No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer. Today we delve into a fundamental theme that resonates with us all, making wise choices in our relationships. Have you ever wondered how to make decisions in matters of the heart that lead to lasting joy and fulfillment? Pastor Jeff is in Genesis 24, where we see Abraham's servant sent out to find a bride for his son, Isaac. What should you look for in a spouse? How do you know you found the right person? Should we seek God in these types of decisions? How involved should our parents be as we search for the right person? All these are questions that God's Word has answers to. Let's join Pastor Jeff now in a message titled, The Next Generation the promise of blessing Abraham and his descendants. So let's pray and ask God to, to send his Holy Spirit and give us understanding in his word. Uh, and so Father, we look to you now. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to lead us and to teach us and to guide us into all truth. And, and we ask this in the simple name of Jesus. Amen. All right, here we are. Uh, a few things to consider. Let's open up Genesis 24. Uh, I'm going to read to us a handful of verses here. We'll see how it goes. Genesis 24, verse number one, it says, now, Abraham uh, was old. He was well advanced in age, and the the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, he says, please put your hand under my thigh. That's kind of a weird thing right there. I remember first, I remember the first time I read that, you know, reading through the Bible years ago, and I first, I came to that, and I go, well, I just don't understand something. And then I'd read it again the next year. And I go, well, I still don't understand that. And it took me, uh, it took me a while to kind of understand that he's just doing nothing more than, you know, making an oath. That's all he's doing. Verse three, he says, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, uh, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. And so remember that. Remember the, the, the territory, what we call Israel today, is the land of Canaan. And, and, and uh, you know, God gave that land to Abraham and to uh, all of his descendants, you know, uh, Israel. We call them the Jewish people here today and all that stuff. Uh, but but that's, that's where it was. And, and, and yet, in the middle of this, even though Abraham gets this, he realizes that those people, the Canaanites, that, that they, were, they were still so against the things of God. And he you know, he did what the custom was at that time, and that was, verse 4, he says, but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? And, and Abraham said to him, beware that you do not take my son back there. Now, let's get the context a little bit here. Uh, you know, Ur, the Chaldeans, uh, Babylon, Mesopotamia. Uh, maybe today we would, we would be, it would be more notable, Persian Gulf and all that stuff. Uh, and so we got Israel. We go east, and, and then there would be Persian Gulf, and we work our way up uh, yeah, the Euphrates River, the Tigris, and all of that stuff. And for them to get there, they couldn't cut just straight across the desert. So they would leave the land of Canaan, Israel, and they would go up north, up towards Syria, over the, what is called the Fertile Crescent, and then they would follow the rivers down, the Euphrates, the Tigris, etc., and then they would work their way down. It's about an 800-mile journey. Uh, I, it may not mean much to you at this point in the story, but please realize that this dude's taking a journey. You know, he's traveling 800 miles, and what he's going to do is he's going to look for a bride for Isaac, for Abraham's son. 
And so the very first idea, something that we can consider is this, is that passing the torch. And, 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 and the, uh, the transition in this tra- chapter with Isaac marrying Rebekah, that's the big thing. And, and, and we see this promise. We see this oath that is made in a very funny uh, gesture. Again, putting the hand under the thigh. And so um, what's the point of him doing that? He wanted him to understand. He wanted the servant to understand that it was very, very serious. That Isaac was to be cared for and the type of wife that he was to have. That there was the care of a father over his son. And, 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 and perhaps we, we would do well to realize that, that Isaac is, at this stage of the game, he's probably about 38 years old. And so, you know, it's, 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 kind, of, um, it's kind of cool to see that type of uh, parental involvement. You know, many times we get to the age of, uh, you know, 20s and 30s. Uh, I realize that there are some folks that never leave home, that they pretty much die in their parents' basement. But for the vast majority of society, you know, by the time you're 38 years old, you should be well established by yourself and moving on, you know, becoming a productive member of society and, and, and so forth. And, and, and the care of a father is still intimately attached uh, in this. And, and, and I, would, I would tell you just by way of application, again, while all of this stuff sounds so strange, again, put your hand under my thigh. Again, Abraham is just going to that place of, of making sure that that care is carried out through the collection of his household and the servants that are there. Abraham was a very wealthy man at this stage of the game. And, and you know, I, I, I would love to encourage you in this regard, that, that if you're a parent or you're a grandparent, uh, to the best of the open doors, to the best of your ability, stay involved in the process with your kids. I think that if we had more parental involvement, parental wisdom, oversight, you know, again, just transferring off those words of, nu- uh, of you know, those, those nuggets of wisdom, if you will, along the way, I think we'd probably see a whole lot less divorces within our culture. You know, right now we, we, we love to go out and, and um, you know, it's, um, you know, we stop at that very first testing mechanism, and that is attraction. You know, we, we get to this place where we're attracted to the good looks of, a, of another person, and we completely forget what the Scripture has to say. Let me read it to you because it's just it's fascinating. Uh, it tells us this in the book of Proverbs. Uh, it says that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. Um, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised uh, give her the fruits of her hand and, and let her own works praise her in the gates. We can realize that this is applicable on both sides, both men, both women, right? The, the, that while we, we start out young and spry, our 20s and our 30s, and things are looking good, and the, sin, the skin is not saggy, and, you know, we don't really have gray hairs in there, and, you know, the knees don't hurt, and your back don't creak, and all of that stuff. But you quickly realize, yep, charm, hmm, it's, just, it's not there. And uh, beauty, yeah, absolutely. It's a vapor is what Jesus says. Life is but a, a vapor. And, and, and this is the idea behind beauty. It's about a vapor. It's here, and then it's gone, you know, just like that. And, and, and so making these, these character judgments here uh, is super important. In verses 7 to 9, uh, he kicks into gear here. Take a look at this. Back in, in Genesis 24, verse 7, it says, uh, The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land. So Abraham is encouraging his servant. He says that, that he will send his angel before you and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. And so the servant put his hand underneath the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Now, now I don't know if you caught that. I, I don't know if you caught what he said there uh, you know, uh, uh, about the oath and, and, and about Abraham just reiterating, hey, don't take my son back there. Don't go backwards. The call of God has come upon me and my family and God brought us out and he's given us this promised land. And, and, and while God wants us to put our anchors and our roots deep down in here, he doesn't want us to go back to where he called us out of. How many people in the church, how many people in this room, how many people listening on the radio in the days ahead, you know, how many people have gone back from what God has called you out of? Think about that kind of in a preachy application type of way. You know, Abraham was making it very clear to his, uh, you know, to the oldest servant within his house, that guy that had the charge of over everything, all of his stuff. He says, listen, 
don't let the old boy get married here, okay? This, these are not t- the type of gals that we, that we want him to have. You know, go back to where the family is so that, so that it stays pure and all of this stuff. And, 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 and yeah, uh, don't take him back there, okay? He, st- he stays here because we're living in the promise here. And, 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 and I would tell you, no matter how hard you might feel your life is right now, if God has called you into a promise, it is the, it's better to be in the, uh, the tough ground in a tough area in the promises of God rather than going to a place um, where, where, where things to seem to be a lot less pressure-filled and, 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 and the, um, you know, maybe the, 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 the tone of the culture or the economic development is much easier. I mean, these are lessons that we learn throughout the Bible, and, and, and one that jumps into my mind is from the book of Ruth, Elimelech, Elimelech and Naomi, right? As they, as they left Bethlehem, the house of bread, to go down to, to Moab, the toilet bowl, God's toilet bowl, because of the economic development that was happening down there. You know, it's, it's, I, I, I can't tell you, um, I, I, I hope this is not too much for you, okay? I, I, I can't tell you how many times that I have this conversation with Jody. I go, this area of Denver that we live, <laughs> it is so fun. Not so much. It is not so much fun up here. And we're like a bunch of frogs in boiling water, and we've just sat here and sat here. And, and, you know, you roll the clock back 10 years and 20 years and 30 years. This area has changed radically in the tone and the temperature within the, in, in this community. And all of Colorado was not like this. And, and, you know, there's other states that are not like, you know, that, that are is so progressively bent in the church and outside of the church, you know, uh, uh, meaning that they're stepping away in radical departures away from the historical elements of, of, of what God has set in place. It's, it's super radical up here, man. And many times I've, I've said, man, oh, what would it be like to, let's go start a church in a different area. And my wife says, really, you're going to step outside of underneath of God's call. God has called you here. And I said, yeah, well, I was just daydreaming for a minute, okay? So just, <laughs> just chill. <laughs> you know? uh, what's it like to wake up when you don't, have a, you, know, you don't have a homeless camp in your backyard? Back in my house faces Walmart. <laughs> the people of Walmart, they are very strange. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, uh, it's just nuts, man. I, uh, uh, I, I pulled up to the house today about uh, 1, 2 o'clock or so. And uh, there was this, there's this tall, skinny kid. Uh, I call him a kid. He probably was 30 years old or so. You know, he's in like wearing these, these um, green camel fatigue type, type stuff. And he's got this gigantor backpack on. That, I, I mean, it's a huge rucksack. And he's, he's rummaging through our neighborhood. I'm going, dude, you seriously don't belong here. What are you trying to steal? You know, uh, uh, now, now, now watch, hear me out on this. Not every place that you wake up and you look around and you go, okay, there's a homeless camp behind my house and I got some freaky Freddy cruising through the front of my yard here. What are you up to, dude? You don't belong in this neighborhood. Mm. So, so what, did, uh, what did Abraham tell his servant? Hey, don't take the boy back there. God has called us here. So understand in this calling, he's secure. And I want you to understand the same thing. And it's applicable for me. In my calling, I'm secure right here. Right here in the grip of God's grace. Right here in the middle of the call that God has given to me. So, um, you know, what, what, was the, uh, what was the servant to do? Well, he was to remain in this place. He was to have faith that God would help him find the right wife for Isaac. Uh, let's take a look at the screen here, Proverbs chapter 3, verses that you guys already know. Just bring in a little different flavor to them because they're in the, uh, the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I think we know that. Yeah, we know that. Do not depend on your understanding. Yeah, 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 we know that. Check this out. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Maybe that's the harder part right there. Seeking his will in all that we do. And God's going to show us which path to take. Because we get some harebrained ideas going on, and we think that we're going to go this and do that, shuck a jive a little over here, you know, and get it all worked out. No, 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 no. We remain. We remain walking by faith. And that's a, this is what the servant was to do. And so we get into verses 10 down through 14 here. Uh, I don't know that I have time to read all of these tonight. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Uh, skip ahead to verse 11. It says that he made his, his camels kneel down outside the, the city um, by a well of water at, at evening time uh, when the women go out to draw water. And then he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. So this is the servant. He's gone on the journey. He's down there now. Uh, and, and, and now he's praying. 
He says, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. He says, behold, here I stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now, let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink. And I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one that you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. And by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And so, you know, what do I want to remind you of in this? I, I, I want you to understand that as we're, we're kind of just baby stepping through this chapter 24, because it's the only chapter we're covering tonight, I want you to understand and to take away a few little principles right here. And that is doing your part. To realize that, that this servant, this servant of Abraham, there was preparation that he had to make. He's in the middle of praying right now. There were steps of, ta- uh, of steps of faith that he had to take. He literally had to leave Israel, uh, the, uh, the territory of Canaan, and he had to make that 800 mile journey and come right back down into where you know he came out of and all of that stuff. There was a lot of stuff that he had to do within that, and 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 it's often said this way as it, as it pertains to us walking out our faith on a daily basis. It is a lot easier for God to steer a moving car than a parked car. And when I, when, when I get to the place and I, you know, whether you park straight in a slot or you're downtown and you do a little parallel parking there next to a meter or whatever, you know, once you're there, you turn the car off, your power steering is dead. It's like, click up, it won't turn anymore, right? Put your brake on and all that stuff. It's hot because the air conditioner is not on and all that. You know, we, we, we can't muscle our cars around and, and so, too, when it, when it comes to walking with, with the Lord, we must understand that there, are, there is preparation, that there is prayer, there are steps of faith that we actively take in all of, these, all of these little things. We see the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Uh, and, and, you know, we're working in partnership with God, if that's the right way to, to phrase that. Now, we advance the conversation a little, and we come to idea number two, and this is the, the uh, spouse selection, okay? Verses 15 down through 56. Again, I'm not going to read them all. Uh, but in verse 15, it picks up. It says, and it happened uh, before he had finished speaking, before he had finished praying, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, a son of Milcah, uh, the wife of Nahor, which is Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now, uh, pay, pay, pay close attention to these verses. It says, now the, the young woman was very beautiful to behold, uh, a virgin, and no man had known her, and she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please, uh, let me drink a little water from your pitcher. And so she said, Drink, my lord. And then she quickly uh, let her pitcher down um, to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. How many camels did the guy have? He had 10 camels. That's a lot of water, best I can tell. I mean... Gee whiz, you know, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how big her, you know, dear Liza, there's a hole in my bucket type of thing. I don't know how big her, her pitcher was. Was it a gallon? Was it two gallons? You know, I'm not sure. But man, you talk about, about filling up something for 10 camels. That's a lot of water, folks. And so she, she, uh, she did that. And, and uh, she says, I will also draw water for your camels. Also, end hell, they have finished drinking. And then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, and she ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all of his camels. Uh, and we could probably just stop right there. Listen, in this area, spousal selection here, you know, that the, the God was revealing to this servant in the way. He was in the way. He was praying as he was in the way. And God was directing him, and he was connecting him. He was asking for specific things, and those specific things were happening, right? There's that interaction. There's that, that prayer, that talking with God, like in real time right there. And, and, you know, he had some particular requests, and God answered those particular requests. And I'm so encouraged by that, to know that on my daily journeys, on the daily things in which we do, that we're able to ask God to intervene in those moments and to lead me in those moments with some very specific things. And that's, it was, that was here. It was taking place. And, 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 and God put him in this place. God allowed him to connect with the right person in that moment. God already had it laid out. And I want, I, want to, I want to give to you four helps to find the right person here. So he's looking for a spouse for Isaac. Four things that we can consider. In verses 16 down through 20, we see uh, in, the, in the string of these verses, uh, we, we find that, that, that beauty was the first thing, right? You know, in that place of attraction. You know, uh, you know uh, oh well. You know, somebody that looks good is going to catch your eye. But it just doesn't stop there with the eyeball, right? Because, because next, it's, there's, there's that, uh, that, um, that character aspect, okay? And, 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 and it's noted here 
that, that she was a virgin. I think if you have the NLT, it says that she was old enough to be married, okay? And, and, and so there's that character aspect that is attached to it. You know, she's not cruising around as a hoochie mama. We would, maybe we call them that today, I'm not sure. I mean, gee whiz, you see folks walking around and I don't even know what the folks do today. I mean, yeah, gals, don't be hurting on the brother that way, you know? Listen, you're gonna wear some clothes, cover it up, you know? Goodness gracious. Um, you know, hey, uh, you know, uh, men aren't perfect, but, but, but God did make them visual. I mean, read the Song of, uh, uh, Song of Solomon right there, right? Gee whiz. And so, uh, you know, don't be a sinner dragging your brother down into bad places. <clears throat> and so uh, there was beauty, there was character, uh, there was a servant heart, right? She was drawing water. She gave him a drink and drew water for the camels and all of that stuff. And so you can, you can see some of those things. And, and, and before I give you the final one here, let me pepper something else in here to, to, so, the, so that we get the, um, the fragrance of this text, so we get the fragrance of what's happening in here. Rebecca, how old do you think she is? 14, 15. She's about 14 years old, yeah. And, and, and how old was Isaac? 38 years old. What would you call that dude today? Oh, no. <laughs> what in the world? That's just the reality of how it was. You know, again, NLT says, old enough to be married. She was old enough to be married. So there you have it. Storyline goes on. Uh, skip ahead to verse 23. It's, uh, you know, he says, he, um, Abraham's servant says to Rebecca, he says, whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? And so she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, uh, uh, Milcah's son, uh, who she bore to Nahor. Uh, moreover, she said to him, we have both straw and feed enough and, and, and room to lodge. And, and then the, the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. And so uh, I, I, I want you to understand this part here. Again, beauty, character, a servant heart. Uh, and, 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 and here's a little principle here that we must understand. Because this servant was on a mission. He took that 800-mile journey to go find somebody very specific. Somebody within the framework of Abraham's family. That's what was happening right here. Okay? And so now I want, I want to make sure that I express this to you. Uh, they're not going to put this on the screen, so please don't put it on the screen. However, if you guys would like to retain some principles for the days ahead, just... just, just Please realize this, that 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that Paul gives that advice. He's speaking to uh, those that have become single by way of divorce and those that have become single by way of death. Uh, you, know, they're, uh, you know, they've been widowed in some regard, if you will. And as he moves through the chapter, there's a lot of different things that he lays out in there. Uh, but, but, I, but I would encourage you to capture the principle in verse number 39 that, that, that you know, as he's using the woman in this, in this circumstance, in these verses right here, please realize that there is a liberty once you've become single, in, in, and again, they were uh, by divorce and by death, okay? And I'm not getting into all the complexities of divorce right now, just making a general statement here. That if you're a Christian, you have liberty to marry somebody as long as, as, as they're in the body of Christ. It says she's at liberty to be married. Again, um, verse 39, the second half. She's at liberty to be, to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. And then you can expand upon that should you desire. In going into 2 Corinthians chapter 6, you start working through being unequally unequally yoked with a, with a non-believer and so forth. And, and, and all of these are just principles that are laid out in the scripture. And, 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 and why we don't have the emphatic uh, doctrinal moments like what Paul gives, we do have the glimmers all the way back from the, the book of Genesis. And we're, we're seeing these principles, if you, if you will, kind of roll through the scripture. That's all for today. Join us for our next broadcast of No Greater Love with Pastor Jeff Kramer, weekdays at 1030 a.m. No Greater Love is an outreach ministry of Westminster Calvary and is supported by listeners like you. If you would like to partner with us, please text any dollar amount to 84321. We would like to personally invite you to join us for our weekly worship services Sundays at 8 or 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 630 p.m. We are located in Westminster, Colorado, on the northeast corner of Church Ranch and Wadsworth Parkway, near the Vasa Fitness. 
If you're not local, tune into the weekly live stream on our web campus, app, Roku, or on Apple TV. Have you downloaded the free Westminster Calvary app yet? You can stay up to date on coming events, join a small group, request prayer, and watch live worship services. Just search Westminster Calvary on your favorite app store today. Lastly, we're a church that's ready to serve you. If we can do so, give us a call at 303-223-4640. And remember, there's no greater love than when Jesus gave up his life for you and me. Thanks and God bless. Thank you.